Hello, I'm Amanda Allred. And I'm Christine Sandell. Christine and I are here today to discuss the North American Substance Abuse Program, also known as NASAP. In 2003, the Houston Business Roundtable joined forces with the Houston Area Safety Council to develop a standardized drug and alcohol testing program. Key owner supporters of this concept include ExxonMobil, BP, Chevron Phillips, Lionel Bissell, Shell, and NRG. Benefits of the NASAP program include a centralized database with portable testing records for the individuals tested. This is much like the training database that we manage at the Safety Council. Individuals that are trained by one employer don't have to get retrained when they change employers. The other benefit of the centralized database for owners is that individuals that abuse drugs and alcohol can't merely change employers and get a clean slate and come back to their site. Also, owners that are utilizing the program can check an individual's status through our gate check application. Our gate check reveals a red light for non-compliant individuals and a green light for compliant ones. At no point do we share actual drug test data. The program also reduces repetitious drug testing through the contractor workforce, thereby reducing costs to both contractors and owners. Another key benefit of this program is that it can be implemented anywhere nationwide as all of the data is sent to us electronically via secure web services. Also the program and the third party administrators are audited by an independent auditor who works in conjunction with the Houston Area Safety Council. Correct. All of the NASAP drug tests are a nine panel drug plus a breath alcohol. All of the tests are submitted through laboratories that are both CAP and SAMHSA certified. This is a big distinction between traditional drug testing programs, which typically use a quick test, and only the positives are sent for confirmation to the lab. Under our program, every test goes to the lab every time. Also, this program ensures a 50% annual random drug test rate, which is 4.2% per month. And the reason Christine specified the 4.2% per month is that your workforce may change over time. You may gear up for a big turnaround, hire a lot of employees, and then in subsequent months, you gear down. So we want to make sure you keep your rosters active so you're not paying for too many drug tests. Now let's go over the program enrollment process. First, you must select a third-party administrator. There are currently four for this program. We highly recommend that you contact all four. That's correct. Uh, good point, Christine. We do not mandate pricing on this. Each TPA has their own price structure. They have their own web tools. You'll want to find out about their turnaround times and, and other services they may offer. The TPAs are going to provide training for the contract employee representatives, chain of custody forms, and consent forms. They're also going to provide a list of collection sites that you can use. Word to the wise, you're going to want to have more than one CER or contractor employee representatives. The reason for that is that if you have only one and that individual should go on an extended vacation or maternity leave or what have you, nobody would get the list of randoms that are generated and all of your employees would become red lighted due to missed random. Also, you're going to have to enroll your employees for their first drug test or if you're currently utilizing one of the four providers, it may be possible for you to grandfather them into the program as long as the test was done under the same standard. That's correct. Now once you have your employees enrolled in the NASAP program, the random process will begin. Again, the TPA or third party administrator is going to notify your CERs, the individuals who've been called for the random tests. The CERs actually have nine days to schedule that test. That is to work around employees' vacation time or critical job site tasks. Correct. The individuals themselves have only 60 minutes plus drive time to get to the collection site. So again, the person themselves does not have nine days to decide when they're going to go take their drug test. Also, once an individual is enrolled in the NASAP program, they will remain in the NASAP program. So if they are not working at a NASAP site, they will still be subject to that 50% annualized random rate in a TPA's waiting assignment pool. Good point. There are pretty strict repercussions for non-compliance with the program. Uh, if you should test positive or submit a non-negative test on your very first test into the program, you will be locked out for six months. You must fulfill rehabilitation through one of the third party administrators. You must submit a negative return to work test and then you're subject to five years of more stringent follow-up testing. Should someone submit a subsequent non-negative test event, there is a three-year lockout period. Once again, they have to complete the substance abuse program, a negative return to work test, and are then again subject to five years of more stringent follow-up testing. 
I'd like to give you just a little information about the database as it stands today. Uh, presently, we have over 170,000 individuals with green light or active status. That's a pretty substantial number. We also have over 101,000 individuals who are inactive retest. These are the individuals that we discussed earlier who are not actively working at an ASAP site who are just waiting to do that negative return to duty test and get active status again. Correct. Unfortunately, there are over 16,000 individuals who have submitted non-negative drug tests. Uh, quite a few of those have submitted numerous non-negative tests. Also, there's over 2,500 individuals who have actually completed a rehabilitation program through this NASAP program, which we're actually very proud of because prior to this program, there wasn't much incentive to actually complete a rehabilitation program. You're correct. Uh, these numbers change every day. We're getting information from the TPAs 24 hours a day electronically. So, As we mentioned earlier, there are four providers for this program. They are ASAP Drug Solutions, DISA, First Advantage, and Forward Edge. We want to take a moment to review the website. There's a lot of useful information on the NASAP website. I'm going to go to my browser. I will warn you, however, our URL is still hasap.com as this program was launched as the Houston Area Substance Abuse Program. So we're still working on getting that NASAP URL. Uh, the first step for you would be to actually find the program document. It's a 21-page document. You can download it here. You can print it or simply review it in your browser. And beneath that is a process overview. It actually details the startup process or the pre-enrollment process Christine described, then the random process itself, and then deactivation. Again, deactivation is the act of moving people out of your employee roster and into the TPA's waiting assignment pool. Additionally, on the website, if you click on the Providers tab, you can get contact information for each of the four TPAs Christine just mentioned. Again, we highly recommend you contact all of the TPAs prior to selecting one. Additionally, the tab for owners details which owner sites across the country mandate NASAP compliance. And this list changes quite frequently. And lastly, under tools, we actually discuss the gate check application. And we're going to demonstrate how the gate check application works for you. On the gate check application, owners can actually configure the gate check to check for what they're looking for for their site entry requirements. Here, we're looking for NASAP compliance, a North American background screen score of five or less, an ARSC Basic Plus or Basic Plus refresher, and the ExxonMobil Baytown combo class. Once the person scans the Safety Council badge or keys in the individual social security number via keyboard, you can check their status. Here, Amanda Allred is non-compliant with those requests. Don't judge me, Christine. If we look at the grid, we can see whether or not what criteria she met or did not meet. Here we look and she sees that she's non-compliant with the NASAP program, also non-compliant with the North Marion Background Screening Consortium, and does not have the ExxonMobil courses as were required. One of the things we want to stress is that you should not judge an individual based on that red light or green light. It merely means they don't meet the entry requirements. A green light in regards to NASAP means the individual is fully compliant with the policy. A red light means they are not compliant for any number of reasons. Possibly the individual's never been tested under this protocol. They might have missed their random test. They may have submitted a non-negative or refused to test. So again, the red light simply means not eligible for entry to your site. Recently, Louisiana had a legislation change that allowed some of the Louisiana companies to implement the NASAP program. Prior to this, the cutoff level for marijuana was much higher than that of the NASAP program. If you have any questions about HASC products and services, please give us a call at 1-877-GET-XNET or email us at pqf at hascxnet.com.